Hi, and welcome back. Today, we're going to have a look at some patching tips for the Arturia BeatStep Pro in combination with the modular system. We won't go over the basic interface or use of the BeatStep Pro, but we'll have a look at a couple of patching tips that you might not have tried or thought of before. So the BeatStep Pro has two melodic sequencers meant to control monophonic synth voices, and a drum section with eight trigger outputs. We're going to have a look at both of them and come up with some ideas for each section. I'll start simple and try to get to some more interesting ideas quickly. If you want to help me make more videos like this, have a look at my Patreon, where you can read more about my plans and where it's possible to support me with a small donation on a monthly basis. But for now, let's get started. So there are two melodic sequencers on the BeatStep Pro. Each one of them has a pitch, gate and velocity output. If you want to control a traditional oscillator, filter, VCA, synth voice, you would patch the pitch to control the 1 volt per octave input of an oscillator, the gate to an envelope modulating the VCA, and if you want to add velocity to that, you could add another VCA at the back, and patch the velocity out to that VCA to control the master volume of your patch. But the fact that the outputs on the Beatstep Pro have names doesn't mean that you have to use them for that specific purpose. All of them output the same thing, control voltage, and you can use that voltage for anything you like. So, especially if you use a sequencer with a wide range, you can make a copy of the 1 volt per octave output and send it to a different parameter in the same voice. The filter is a classic destination, so you open the filter when you're playing higher notes, but you can send it anywhere you like. If you want to stretch the melodic power of a single sequencer, any sequencer really, you can mold the 1 volt per octave signal to a sample and hold and trigger that module with a slower speed to create a second melody that is related to the main sequence but doesn't have all the same notes. Once you get the hang of using the one volt per octave for other things than melodies, it's time to start looking at the velocity sequence. I didn't really use this sequencer a lot in the beginning until I realized it's a completely independently programmable sequencer that can be used on anything you want. So if you don't use it for velocity, you can use this sequence to control completely different parameters in your voice. Like a filter, of course, but to give you a few more ideas to get started, Try things like a wave folder or wave shape of an oscillator, decay of an envelope, the speed of an LFO, or parameters in effects such as reverb amount or delay time. This will create more lively patches. You can also send this sequence to a VCA and control the amount of modulation passing on to something. For example, the amount of frequency modulation from a second to the main oscillator, or the amount an LFO is modulating the filter. You can even use the velocity of a sequencer to control something outside of the voice it's sequencing. Once you separate these two in your mind, they become very powerful in live performances or patches. For example, you can use the gate and one volt per octave on a synth voice, but use the velocity of that part to modulate the sound of a drum module, parameters of effects modules, other voices, the speed of your main clock, and so on. Anything is possible. Here's an example patch I use with only one sequencer. The 1 volt per octave is controlling the pitch of the Dixie 2. The gate triggers an envelope on the Quadra, which is going to the Wasp filter and Linux VCA, creating a simple voice. Then, I mold the gate to the sample play input of the 4MS sampler. And finally, the velocity goes to the sample select input of the sampler, picking one of 10 prepared single drum heads. This way, I use the velocity to program entire drum sequences. Now, with some clever programming, when switching between saved sequences, I can have either or both the synth voice and drum pattern changed with a single button, like this. In this example, both the voice and drums are triggered from the first sequencer. But if you want more complexity, you can replace the drum triggers with one of the eight trigger tracks the BeatStep Pro offers and create a different trigger pattern. And while we're talking about triggers, you can use the gate outputs from the melodic voices as an independent track to trigger drums or other events. The nice thing here is that you can create polyrhythms while using different time divisions than the main drum triggers. You can even program the velocity sequence in only high and low outputs to turn it into a trigger sequencer. Here, for example, I use one of the basic triggers to trigger a four to the floor kick. 
I use the one fold per octave and gate of the first melodic sequencer to trigger a 7 step voice. But now I use the velocity output of this voice to trigger a nice 7 step polyrhythmic head pattern. Again, the velocity curve can be used for anything. In this example, I use the one full per octave sequences of both melodic sequencers to control two different oscillators, and use each of those velocity parts through a quantizer to control two more oscillators. So now it's a four node polyphonic sequencer. If you want to create a pattern that's shifting over time, you could use two sequences with different step lengths. Now that we started to use both sequencers, keep in mind that you can use one to change parameters on the voice of the other. This is especially interesting if you use sequences with different step lengths. Here I have two simple voices. One is an 8 step sequence controlling a bass line from the Dixie 2 through the Wasp filter. The other is a 3 step sequence controlling a higher voice from the Wavetable oscillator through the multimode gate. But the 3 step velocity sequence is controlling the filter of the 8 step bass and the velocity of the 8 step, the wave shape of the 3 step melody. By controlling the amount of modulation, you can change the character of each voice, related to the pattern of the other. Here's how that sounds. Keep in mind that the one volt per octave output is quantized and the velocity output is not. And if you program two voices or parts with one sequencer, they will share the same mute button and sequence changes. But with some clever programming, these tricks can improve the sequencing power a lot, especially if you're performing full songs which are modular. Just like with both the melodic sequencers, it's good to remember that the Arturia Beatstep Pro's trigger sequencer just outputs voltages. They can be used to trigger anything or even as modulation. And remember, you can set the length of the triggers to almost a full step, so they become gates. And you can use these to do anything you like. Here's our simple voice again. And when you use the velocity curve of your voice to do something more complex, you can still use a gate pattern to place accents on a sequence by opening the filter on certain steps, for example. Or think of things like wave shape or programming certain steps where the decay of a voice is longer. Here's another example of how I use gates as modulation source. I use one of the trigger sequencers to trigger the basimilas. Then I use two other sequencers to modulate some of its parameters through attenuators. By unmuting either or both of these modulation sequences, I can create variations to the pattern, like this. And you can also trigger other things than drums, of course. One of my favorite things is to trigger envelopes or reset LFOs to create nice rhythmical modulation. Let's take our simple voice again. In this example, I have 16 steady steps triggering a fast envelope, which is sent to a closed VCA. Then I use the second trigger to trigger a longer rising envelope that opens that VCA. The result goes to the filter of our synth voice. I can now trigger the rising envelope live during performances or program it to create a break. This is a nice way to have drums interact with melodic parts when you're just muting and starting drum parts on the Beatstep Pro, like this. You can also hook the gates directly to a VCA to create one-step bursts of modulation to something. This is also interesting with very slow speeds. For example, a burst of frequency modulation to the main oscillator. Or think of things like a random voltage to the delay time. Or a step of LFO to a filter. Be creative. And if you don't like the hard edges of the gate, you can use a gated envelope generator or slew limiter to shape the gates. And here's the last triggering tip. 
you can use a 16 step double speed gate pattern from one of the melodic sequencers, which you can set independent from the drum triggers, to create ratcheting rhythms by passing them through a VCA and open that VCA with a gate from the trigger sequencer. Combined with a mixer or trigger combiner, you can use regular triggers with the double speed triggers on steps of your choice to trigger a hi-hat for example. That works like this. I hope you picked up some ideas and you enjoyed watching this. If you have more tips, feel free to share them in the comments. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching and see you next time.